my name is Samantha Howard and I'm Curator of Arts at the Potters Museum and Art Gallery. Today on Talking Treasures we'll be taking a closer look at one of our sculptures in the Art Gallery. The human form has often been the centre of controversy in the representation of it in art and we'll be looking at one of the most arguably controversial sculptors of the 19th century, Auguste Rodin. So I hope you'll join me in the gallery. In this Talking Treasures, we'll be taking a closer look at our bronze sculpture called Eternal Spring by the French sculptor Auguste Rodin. As you can see, the sculpture depicts the naked forms of a man and woman locked in a passionate embrace. The male figure is leaning towards the female figure whose torso is arching towards him as they kiss. There's a real sense of movement conveyed in the bronze as these two figures twist towards each other and this is heightened by the highlights revealed in the uh, patina of this rich bronze um, casting. There are around 69 versions of this um, bronze cast. The original would have been worked in clay by Rodin before it was cast into bronze. And this particular casting was, is believed to be made between 1898 and 1918. The actual topic in Eternal Spring was um, part, or part of some 200 figure groups created by Rodin for his 1880 commission. Um, for two or a pair of monumental doors for a new decorative arts museum that was to be built in Paris. His ambitious project was to convey the sculpted figures all over these doors and his main inspiration he took from Dante's epic poem The Divine Comedy and the Eternal Spring, the characters in the Eternal Spring are supposed to uh, represent the um, concept of forbidden love from the gates of hell portion of the poem. And these two figures are supposed to represent the um, tragic story of Paolo and Francesca. Although the museum was never built and Rodin's design for the monumental entrance doors was never realised, the Gates of Hell project for him was certainly a defining theme of his career and it was a topic that he returned to time and time again. And he chose to develop some of these sculptural groups that he had intended for the design for the doors into independent uh, works in their own right and Eternal Spring was one of these. As the title suggests, it's a very uplifting subject, so it may be the reason behind he chose this um, topic of the two lovers as an independent um, work. He transformed the male figure into a mythological god, and if we look towards the, around the back of the figure, we can see he's actually placed two wings on the male figure's back. It may have been that he was trying to temper the erotic nature of the work and turn it into a mythological um, subject which was a highly fashionable um, theme in decorative arts at the time. He in fact exhibited uh, the sculpture with the wings on the male figure's back as a myth mythological subject at the annual Paris Salon in 1897 under the title Zephyr and Earth and again the following year um, as mythological lovers as Cupid and Psyche in 1898. In fact, mythological subjects were um, a specialism that Rodin had produced throughout his early career and it wasn't really until he made a trip to Italy in 1875 that he encountered in person the work of Michelangelo and it's thought that this encounter really shaped his artistic practice in turning his sculpture into these very kinetic and solid sort of fleshy human beings that we see before as in, as in this example in Eternal Spring. Um, the 19th century art going public didn't know quite what to make of his sculpture. Um, they found it extraordinary and disturbing and certainly in his own lifetime art critics condemned his work as vulgar. And it wasn't really until after his death he was widely acknowledged as the father of modern sculpture. So we're very pleased to have an example of his work in the museum. Thanks for joining us for our look at Eternal Spring by Auguste Rodin. And we hope you can join us again very soon.